Margarine is healthier than butter. Don't yeah. eat egg yolks. It's terrible for you. It's going to kill you. If you drink milk, if you have to, drink fat-free milk. Right. Now, here's the, here's the funny part. It's not just that they were wrong. It's that it was literally the opposite. Yeah. It wasn't just wrong. It was the opposite. Not only is margarine not healthier than butter, but butter's far healthier than margarine, right? Mm -hmm. Not only are egg yolks not going to kill you, but eating a whole egg increases protein synthesis. It's got choline. It's got beneficial <coughs> cholesterol. It's actually far healthier for you. Milk, skim milk can, re can result in nutrient deficiencies because it doesn't have the fat to allow for the fat-soluble vitamins and nutrients to get absorbed. Skim milk can actually cause, uh, it's been connected to osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Contrary to popular media propaganda, meat, eggs, and milk are the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. It's true. There's almost no foods as nutriently dense as what I just said. Do, now, did you, you just see this in an article? Yeah, is that like, not commonly like, believed? Con no, it's it? not, dude. People think, okay, I'll tell you guys why I brought this up. Yeah. I wrote something along those lines on Twitter. Like, hey, contrary to this you know, popular media... Meat, eggs, and milk, most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Somebody gets on pissed off. That's not true. If you ate those, you'd be, they're not healthy. you got to have fruits and vegetables. Say, okay, yes. Ideally, you want to have a variety of things. But it is true that you would get no nutrient deficiencies, very unlikely, if you just ate meat, for example. Not that it's ideal, right? but you wouldn't. I said, name one yeah, plant what food. What you can live off of yes. like solely. I said, name one plant food you could do that with. And, and this person goes, kale. I swear to God. Good like, luck bro, with that. Have you seen? Oh. Have you not I'm like, seen? If you just yeah. ate kale, just for, watch Naked and Afraid or Alone. Oh. Yeah, watch yeah, Alone, exactly. dude. Yeah. No, and by the way, when I say nutrients, <laughs> people, you know what the problem it ain't is? Lasting it, long at all. We're always hearing about phytonutrients and antioxidants, all these exotic things. And yes, those yeah, are also micro, in food. Micronutrients. Yeah, those are in foods, <laughs> and and they may have some value, right? But what I'm talking about are proteins, fats, and carbs. So those are those are those are nutrients. Only two of them are essential: proteins and fats, and then also minerals and vitamins that are essential. Yeah. And you can get away with just eating meat and not have a nutrient deficiency. You can't say that about any other food. Yeah. Um, and that's just that's just a fact. And those foods are very healthy in an appropriate diet. And I do want to say appropriate because if you overeat then almost anything becomes unhealthy but if it's an appropriate calorie diet it's not heavily processed foods like those foods historically forever we've known them to be healthy it's just this propaganda that comes out and i do have a theory as to why they push so hard you know that we got to just eat plants I, I i have a theory around that what's that money yeah Definitely. Yeah. You, you, to that's date. It always boils down to. It's yeah. never, that's never a stretch. When you I know, right? Now, to date, because uh, I say to date, because who knows if this is going to change in the future, there is no GMO beef, chicken, fish, eggs, or milk. And that means you can't patent your milk. You can't patent your cow, yeah. right? You can process, you can have processed meat products and patent that, but I'm talking about the whole natural uh, part. You can't. There are patentable products. Uh, you know, whole quote unquote natural plants like soy is GMO, corn is GMO, um, and they can do GMO almost anything that's plant, and it's very easy to patent. And then you control the market, and it's a ton of money. The, yeah. the profits on that are. Do tremendous. you think that we're moving in a direction to patent those things though? Oh, I oh yeah, one hundred percent. I think they already have GMO salmon. I mean, what do you think? Did you see? Did you see the news too about uh, Bill, Bill Gates? Gates? Yeah, another you. two, another two thousand acres. Why is he buying all the farmland? He's land? up to two hundred and seventy thousand acres. His mission is to get everybody uh, to lower, reduce the amount of meat that they're consuming, and and consume more plant based meat and all, the, all these other products. Did you see what the 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 other part of that is? Is that they're pushing now? You're starting to see more and more. And you're going to see more of this insect eat insects. Yeah, well, we talked about that a long Dude, time ago. Yeah, that to me makes sense. It does, but what they're trying to do is make it so that we we don't eat meat, milk, oh, eggs, right. and then, oh, here's your insect patties, and this is where you're mm, going to get insect your, patties. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is where you're going to get Remember your Remember when we had those chips protein. way wow, back they're when? they're finally promoting it. Yeah. Oh, the cricket chips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought you liked them. You liked them. They weren't, they weren't bad. I had a hard time. They weren't just bad. It was, I don't mind it, dude. I had a hard time because yeah. it's, you, I just- Crickets are probably crunchy and chips are crunchy. <laughs> so there's the association was just too much. Well, for me. okay, here I'm gonna like put chirps as you Yeah, I think I, I think I could do cricket patties before I could do cricket chips. So here's the problem that I, I come up with. If you eat food, let's say you open a bag of chips and like, oh shit, yeah. there's an insect in there. Gross. 
Like you can't do that. With, like if it's if yeah, it's it just insects, adds to the mix. Right? Like you look <laughs> in there, way, like, there's oh, a couple cool. legs or whatever loaded with protein. Yeah, you're like, oh yeah, it's supposed to be in there <laughs> because it's that's what it's chewing made through of. thoraxes. <laughs> you can gross. no longer return it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, hey, this has oh, this yeah. has bugs in it. It's yes, it does, to, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, such a cultural thing, right? Like, I mean, we. We're we're only like repulsed by it because of convenience, you know. Like other places, they'll eat like grubs and and no problem. Yeah, they will. Well, I mean, humans have eaten. Uh, we're opportunists, right? Yeah, as so. I say, you would if you were starving. Oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'd eat you know almost anything, right? But we're not. So, but but what would be prized <laughs> no, I the like most? Steak. Yeah. That's a good. That's good though. What would be prized the most in the wilderness? Uh, elk. Or deer or fish. Sure. Well, I mean? no, not elk or deer. Those are both leaner meats. You'd want a fattier meat. Oh As no! A, you eat. You can eat. I'm talking. Okay. Yes. If you just carve off the, the or you lean just say part. meat in general. All of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, meat would be. But yeah. my point is, like, a, you would want a fa a fattier animal would be the most right. ideal animal. So there's parts of, of survival. There's parts yes. of the elk and yes. the deer that are fatty and yeah. that you that you would eat, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's some animals. You're right. Like a rabbit. Uh, that are very lean. Yeah, I know. There's, yeah. there's is there uh, a thing called that? Isn't there rabbit like, starvation. Yeah, it's called. Yeah, where, where trappers would starve because <laughs> the rabbit was too lean, so they were just getting protein, not getting enough fat. Yeah, and they would essentially starve, even yeah. though they had tons of calories. They get all the rabbit they want, and it just wouldn't work out. I mean, it, that's probably that's in survival mode. Fat is even more prioritized than you'd say protein, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I, um, well, they're both essential. As far you as have to have they harvest blubber, right? And in, yeah. in, in U.S. And they they put the meat that that uh, fat on all kinds of different meats. Like they they layer it on top of. Yeah, it. I think. Fats Can you make the case too to when you talk across. about a whole animal that like uh in in actually realistic to to live off of would probably be fish. As far as the balance Easiest. of yeah balance of fat and yeah. and protein that's it's all there it. depends if you're catching just a bunch of tilapia you know what I mean uh, hell lean I mean that's leaner fish it's still got fat in it does it though. yeah 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 it's enough only, that's a good question actually I don't yeah. know I don't know if it would be I don't think it's as lean as rabbit is that's a good question I don't yeah. know like what how, if you could live off a of tilapia I know that is a bottom feeder fishing fish, would, would be suck. would be smart it's easier to catch fish than it is to kill a bear yeah, or no. an elk or a, a moose but you'd have to be near water right so yeah. obviously that that matters totally but, but you know remember this is coming from the same people it wasn't that long ago that this was literally hammered into us margarine is healthier than butter don't yeah. eat egg yolks it's terrible for you it's going to kill you if you drink milk if you have to Drink fat-free milk. Right. Now, here's the here's the funny part. It's not just that they were wrong. It's that it was literally the opposite. Yeah. It wasn't just wrong. It was the opposite. Not only is margarine not healthier than butter, but butter's far healthier than margarine, right? Mm -hmm. Not only are egg yolks not going to kill you, but eating a whole egg increases protein synthesis. It's got choline. It's got beneficial <clears throat> cholesterol. It's actually far healthier for you. Milk. Skim milk can re can result in nutrient deficiencies because it doesn't have the fat to allow for the fat soluble vitamins and nutrients to get absorbed. Skim milk can actually cause uh, it's been connected to osteoporosis mm. <laughs> because how it's long just do you think sugar and protein could live just eating kale? Oh, and drinking water. As, however I mean, long, predictable. Like how, how? Like how many? How long do you live off a of kale? Yeah. Like how? How long would you however, give them? However long you can live you, with no food. Have you ever really gotten into it? I like I've watched m multiple seasons of Alone. Have you like got into it like that? Yeah. I mean, I've just watched one season before, but I. I mean, they've never seen anybody do like just. Like oh yeah, there's kale. The it's all time. well they haven't just done kale, but like berries and bushes yeah. and shit like that. Like those people are gone quick. <laughs> yeah, they, no seriously, the vegans like, are fucked. The people on that can't, the people that do not find meat are fucked. You're out. If you do not find fish or you do not kill an animal, you're the first to go. Yeah. You're done. You're quick. Yeah, real quick. They lose weight so fast, and then they're the, always the ones that left. I mean, that's how you – and you. I'm, my buddies and I are, like, hardcore. My other two buddies are way hardcore into the show, and I've watched a handful of seasons. Show. And we love to watch the first episode and then predict, like, you know, who's got the who's, skills. Yeah. And everybody always bets on the, 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 the guy or the girl who's got the best hunting skills. Like, if, if you can't go hunt an animal and get it, like – those the and the ones that are like oh no I'm gonna go you know, I'm gonna go get some berry and they start off like that you're like start oh yeah collecting yeah. everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like yeah good luck <laughs> I've been working all day collect, kill things yeah. collecting berries and leaves and I collected a grand total of 150 calories this yeah. is gonna be great yeah, yeah. I yeah. burned 400 calories collecting 150 yeah. calories I'd be better mm -hmm. no I I bet on the guy that like grabs the spider right off the web and just eats it you know like, that guy is you're, gonna make you'd be it. better yeah, off the true opportunity you'd right. literally be better off when it comes to the berries and plants you'd be better off 
just sitting there not burning calories. You know, you're right. I swear to God. Well, I've, that's seen, other... I've seen some strategies that people have done that. Just uh, Naked it and Afraid was a show I watched that's like similar to that. But yeah, yeah the guy that just <laughs> just literally just chills out you know, every day and just eats just enough and then doesn't really just do any, it out. Everybody hates him, though. You know, like everybody that's like, you know, it's a little community they create and they're all trying to help each other out. And then one guy is just like kind of like barely even doing anything and, and they want to vote him off and all this. And he lasts like the longest. I, I mean, the show, the what what's enlightening about the show is just like how fast I would die. Like, I just recognize that. Right oh, away. I mean, because you, you have to build a shelter, too. So it's like you can't like yeah. in, in alone. You don't. I have, have zero. They put you in a place where it's like you need shelter. Bro, or you're I have you zero. Have yeah. I have zero survival skills. Yeah, zero. Yeah. I would be I'd, same thing. I watch <laughs> you, it. Yes, you do. You could talk. Come bro. on, guy. Talk. Yeah, you. So you would go find one of the other shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would convince somebody else why you need to give them your food. <laughs> <laughs> Which may be the most powerful yeah. skill yet. My strategy is uh, I'm going to convince them to make me their leader. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you, go get this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. let me just manage everything, guys. I'd be dead, man. I watched yeah. that and I'm like, manage I, water. I don't yeah. know how to make shelter. Yeah. don't know how to catch fish without yeah. a fishing line. And, but I know and, how to tell people what to do. Yeah, but yeah. man. <laughs> Damn they want to listen to that. They yeah. want to listen to a podcast. I'll crush. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, fireside stories all day. I, it's it's totally crazy. <laughs> I hate that shit. Anyway, speaking of food and stuff, um, man, I tell you, I've used so many different uh, products for gut health. You guys know, and the people who listen to the show know that I, you know, gut health is uh, it, this is my weakness, or, or should I say, this is where if my health goes poor, my gut health shows up first. And lately, it's been really good. It's been really good for a long time. And there's a few different reasons why, but I have to I have to totally be honest. I think it's I think seed is making the biggest difference. I've never used a probiotic that I can tell massive difference. You're not the, you know you're not difference. the first person to tell me that either. I have some family that you know my my cousin Stephanie, who swears by it too. Like she's had gut issues forever, and she's tried all the different probiotics. When she got introduced to seed, she was like. That is, it's been life changing. If I go without it for a couple I, of weeks, admittedly, I, can tell I can't tell a difference. Just being straight up, like I haven't, I haven't, but I also haven't been consistent enough with it. I've, I use my probiotic, like uh, uh, if I know that I'm going to go do something that I know is going to, I don't, you're consistent, right? You're I, like, bro, it's, there's no, I've never had anything that works so well. Like literally, if I take it, I'm fine. If I don't and I wait four or five days, then I notice that my gut starts to go off a little bit. I've never taken a probiotic like that in my entire life. I've tried probiotics a million and one different times. Yeah. Some are better than others for me. Some actually make my gut health worse. Sometimes there's certain brands I'll take that I'll actually mess me up. What do you think that is? I think it's the, okay, it's so. The time release of it, right? Yeah. Or the technology so, behind it? Yeah, I think it's it's the way that they make the capsules, because they have this machine where they where seed is developed, where that simulates the digestive tract, and it makes sure that it releases the probiotic in the colon. Mm -hmm. which is where you want this particular bacteria strains to go. Other probiotics don't really have a great delivery method. Does so the that's machine why. actually like poop it out at the end? Yeah, is it, well, stupid. yeah it does. That's crazy. Justin wants to see it so I just want to see the whole thing. Like, yeah, hey, works. Were you, Child. hey, were you the kid? Were you, cause remember in the I was 80s? wearing a pee-pee shirt yes, the other day, you guys. Yes, yes, he, don't he expect a lot He is me. this kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> For I sure forgot about that. You remember? I could never do that. Why did we do a song to this, guys? You can't do an armpit fart. I mean, I could. If you I could. Had you can't to. play. Just, you I, can't I, play I, music I to it. The, I thought for sure you could. I mean, yeah. hey, do you guys remember in the eighties? There, was, there was a whole trend of dolls that pooped. Remember that? It was like for a whole period there. They were like you that you was a thing. Them and then that it was, was like a, a little, thing. Yeah, I don't remember little that. brown ball. I, oh yeah, bro. Out. In the eighties, it was like the thing. Like, oh, this doll. If you feed it, it also poops. Baby alive or baby whatever. And yeah, it pooped. I know because my sister wanted every single one for some reason. She wanted to change diapers. She was like eight years old. I'm like, yeah, well, baby just, alive. Yeah, baby that's alive. what they were doing. They're like, took, <laughs> yeah, show a picture of that, Doug. Trying to make it as realistic as possible. That's like, weird. Oh, I don't remember. Baby yeah, poop. so you'd feed it the food that came with it, and then it would just it would just come out the butthole. And yeah, it would, it would poop. Yeah, see, there it is. That's exactly. That's what the one my sister had wow. right there. Well, I was going to transition us into food in our other commercial, but now you're talking about poop. That makes it really it's fake. Poop. <laughs> it's it's fake. Poop. I mean, we're talking about your Not gut good and mood. I was going to give you like a nice uh, transition into the next commercial, but then I'm like, oh my God. It'll dude, have this, to wait. Yeah, yeah it's going to have to wait. Have to wait. So we'll switch it up. We'll circle this, back <laughs> yeah, to something yeah, else. My bad. I took uh, us down no, I, a I, brown room. I have this uh, this recipe that I wish I, were, I would give the credit to the person who I saw the post. I don't remember who posted it, but it was good enough that I snapshotted it 
and sent uh, to Katrina. And then Katrina, I sent it to her like a week or two ago, and then she she finally just made it the other night. And it's really good. So we take a uh, like a cookie sheet and then wax paper on it, and then you take um, Greek yogurt and uh, a little bit of almond milk in there, and then you you spread it over the cookie sheet, and then you sprinkle, like we did strawberry slices, a little bit of granola, a little bit of chocolate chips. Oh, and in the Greek yogurt, we whip up you know protein powder. So we whipped up Organifi vanilla. So you take Greek yogurt and just just with a spoon? Yeah, yeah. Just whip, oh. just whip, just stir in the protein powder so you get it mixed in really well. Mm, okay. A little bit of almond milk so it thins it out a tiny bit. Oh wow! And then you you pour it over the wax paper on the cookie sheet, and then you then you put and you could do other stuff. I just we chose strawberries, a little bit of granola, and a little bit of chocolate chips mm. into this, and then you put it in the freezer, and then it hardens, and then you like take a knife and you break it into like these almost like peanut brittle looking chunks. Really? That are high protein snacks that are cold. Is it Bomb. good? Bomb. Really? Hella good. Wow. So good. Yeah. Wow. I've, ne I've never seen anybody Sounds do good. that before. And I saw that and I was like, and I've I've done a uh, I've done like a Greek yogurt. I think I've, a long time ago I've talked to you guys about where we used to strain it over a uh, cheesecloth and then you take all the liquid out and then we turn it into like a whipped cream where you whip it and then you put like sevia or, or whatever in it. Mm -hmm. And then you dip strawberries in it. And now you got like a high protein uh, whip whip that you can dip in. That's pretty good. I've done mm. that for a long time. So it kind of reminded me of something like that. I know how much I like that. Now, is it good enough to where if you gave it to somebody and they didn't know there's protein powder in it, that they'd be like, oh, this is good. Like, oh, you, you don't taste the protein powder in it. So you could take it to a party and, and serve it, and everybody would. Yeah, be, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And it's a high protein snack because you got the Greek yogurt, which is already. What high would protein. be a good dairy alternative a, to that, Doug? A dairy alternative? Yeah, because I can't do Greek yogurt. Oh. Yeah. Is there anything that would be? They make a coconut uh, milk yogurt. Have you seen those? Yeah, they do make nut yogurts, but I don't know how thick they are. Okay. The thing about Greek yogurt is very thick. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Although you thin it out a little bit with the almond milk. Yeah. But you don't thin it out a lot. It's not runny at all. It's mm. just enough to kind of spread it over the wax paper. So it's just like a splash. So, so okay, how many? So uh, how many servings would you say? I mean, I could crush the whole. Well, no, I wouldn't say the whole thing. I ate, I ate like a quarter of how it. How many scoops of protein are in that? Just one. So but you twenty could, grams. You could put well twenty grams plus a Greek yogurt. Yeah, so it's probably forty grams of protein. Yeah, yeah. In that whole thing. Wow, yeah. that's pretty damn good. Yeah, and if you ate the whole thing, it's not going to be that high a calorie. You could you could eat the whole thing, mm. but it's designed to break it up and everybody kind of pick at it. How? But you got to keep it frozen, right? Yeah, because it ha it will melt back down. Mm -hmm. So you want to eat it like fresh. You want to freeze it as soon as you pull it out. You basically want to eat it. You wouldn't leave it on the counter because then it will it'll melt back down. So that's probably right. the only drawback that I noticed about it was like, um, you know, if I because I did that, I actually pulled it out of the freezer, broke it up, and then I told Katrina, "Oh, go down and have some." It was like two hours later. It was oh, like yeah. all soft again. You know, it will it'll get like it will oh, get uh, Katrina. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I didn't know I had that on. Uh, <laughs> it'll get it'll get soft. And then we just, but it won't, it didn't run anywhere. I just put it right back in the freezer and then it froze back up again. So, uh, I'll, yeah, you know what? I've been using a lot. By the way, how long have we been with Organifi now? They, they're our longest sponsor for sure, right? They were, they were one of the first people that we, we did a deal with. Over five years. Has Almost, it been over five years? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I think this, we're coming up on five. Maybe five, yeah. 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 The, the, the product that I get most people say that they use from them is the protein or the green juice. Green juice still is at the top. Mm -hmm. People still, Whenever I do a post or whatever and ask, you know, what's well, I think thing? most people relate. Uh, I mean, at least people that I know um, don't. If you you eat out or if you pre even if you prep your meals, you know, prepping uh, vegetables ahead of time sucks. Yeah. So when I normally prep, I I do like the meat and the carb. Yeah. yeah. And then I try and make fresh vegetables mm -hmm. with it, but the reality is, a lot of times I don't. Do you guys like the crisp apple? Yeah, that's uh, really good. No, it's bomb. Uh, yeah. yeah, they they killed it. With they that. improved the formula. Oh, yeah, totally. So much. Yeah, yeah totally. It's good Delicious. stuff. Yeah. Dude, shablam! Mind pump time. Hey, here's the giveaway for today. So in today's episode, we talk about the ideal uh, order of maps programs, which led us to talk about the RGB bundle. Okay, RGB stands for red, green, black. Uh, that's Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, Maps Aesthetic. It's a wonderful trio of programs. You follow an order. It gives you nine months of perfect, amazing exercise programming. Everything planned out for you. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give one of those away for free to one of you viewers. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. And then if we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. You'll get free access to the RGB bundle. Now, everybody else, don't worry. That RGB bundle is on sale. We took 
it 50% off. So half off right now for the RGB bundle includes those three programs. Plus, we're throwing in for free Kettlebell for Aesthetics, the Sexy Athlete Modification, and the Butt Builder Blueprint. Okay, so all of that is in the RGB bundle right now. It's also 50% off. Also, we have an individual MAPS program on sale. Okay, so just a single MAPS program. It's MAPS Suspension. This is a suspension trainer program. It's great for those of you with limited space. If you like to work out with like Olympic rings or with the straps, that's what that's what it comes with. That's what you use, I should say, are suspension trainers. Uh, MAPS Suspension, very effective. Again, that's also 50% off. So if you're interested in either one of those, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the coupon code July 50, that's July 50 with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. I found a show, a series on Netflix that you guys uh, need to check out. It's, it's, it kind of, it comes across a little cheesy, but it's actually really good, really good content. So don't make that face, Adam. <laughs> it's skeptical. You'll like of, it. Adam over okay. here. It's okay. called <laughs> Unexplained. Oh, yeah, hey, well, we've all seen that. Unexplained. We've all watched that. What do you mean you've all watched it? What are you, new here or what? Yeah, bro, that's like old. It's been, it's been around forever. They 2021. Get, he gets into MDMA in there. They get you in, talking about William Shatner? Yeah. The one William Shatner? I love that show. Talking? You know why? Because it's similar to Ancient Aliens. It's like kind of, it gets into bro, like- Bro, we brought it up a long time ago. Theory. No, you did Yes, we Actually, did. yeah, no, I think, yeah. Th there's two. There's another one. Uh, it sounds like- There's a lot of unexplained shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. It's called, it's actually called Unexplained. And the one with William, different one, They get into yeah. MDMA. This is the one with William in, Shatner. Yeah, this is this is different. Yeah. Star Trek, right? Yep. That guy. I know okay. what you're talking about. And did you guys watch the episode on the, the Mysteries of the Brain? I think oh, I did. Is it one of the first two episodes? Um, I, no, I only watched the first three episodes of that. Okay. No, I think it was like the fifth or sixth uh, one. Okay, I, I scrolled through and clicked on. Okay. This is so This is so damn weird to me. Okay. So have you, you guys know what a savant is, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a genius. Somebody's yeah. a genius in a particular field. Well, there's something called, I believe it's called sudden savant syndrome. Mm -hmm. I think is the name of it. Anyway, there's this guy on there. And when he was like a teenager, he was playing with his buddies in the pool or you know, wrestling, whatever. And he decided he was going to jump into the pool head first, kind of show off. Anyway, Bla hits his head. It was a shallow end of the pool. Hits his head at the bottom and really hurts himself. Goes to the hospital. They do a bunch of imaging. Thankfully, no bleeding. But there was some brain damage. There was some damage. So he's at his mom's house and kind of resting it off for a week or whatever. And, you know, he started to get better. And then it seemed like he made this kind of full recovery. Anyway, he goes to his friend's house. <clears throat> it's a true story. Goes to his friend's house and his friend had a keyboard laying yeah. out. And he looks at the keyboard and he felt compelled to walk over to it, looks at it, and then starts fucking playing the piano. Yeah. Like a like a like a virtuoso. And like an expert. And never, never played before. before. Never played the piano before. Never took a lesson before. Just was I able read to about just, this. Yeah. This was uh, I mean, this is a while back. <clears throat> there was other cases where people would uh, all of a sudden they knew this this entire other language. Yeah. And you're just like and, and it, like how does that even happen? Is like if they're exposed to it and they're just, you're just like subconsciously. Well, yeah. That's weird to me. Like a language or learn, like, cause that, that's kind of the same thing. Learning, having a language that all kind of you can speak or playing the piano. That's wild. Like if there was something that you were around all the time and you were taking it in, yeah, you're and not even like you get a hit and then acting, you get hit your head and then all, maybe that pathway makes a connection. And then all of a sudden you can, yeah, no, I don't recommend anybody go home and hit themselves in the head. To try no, yeah, yeah. but that's really work. crazy. <laughs> They also too like uh, Roseanne Barr, I guess. Like she got in an accident when she was a, a girl, like a car hitter, I believe, and like got brain damage. And then, um, like this is one of those things. That, like the high risk factor goes way up, and so she became way like a totally different personality. Weird. And so she attributes a lot of like. Well, no, I mean it's crazy because this guy. It's what he does for a living now. Is he plays the piano in front of large audiences and symphonies. <laughs> And he all of a sudden became this like genius, literal genius cool with story. the piano. Yeah. And then, yeah, they talked about someone who hit their head and then, and then was able to speak other languages. And the theory, there's two theories. One of them is really weird. One of them is that we have all, we all contain this like, this latent or hidden abilities. Like we can do anything. Like embedded it, in our DNA. It somewhere. just gets unlocked. The other one is that like, I, I've never taken piano lessons, but I've heard music. I've been around pianos a couple of times. Some of that gets stored subconsciously and maybe through brain damage or whatever, I'm able to then start playing it and then immediately learn it just by listening to the keys or whatever. Same mm -hmm. thing with language. Like I start saying words, starts making sense. Maybe I've heard it a couple so times. So what do you think it is? Do you think it is a, like a passed down DNA thing from like maybe, maybe like seven generations ago, he had somebody in his family right. that was hella good at it right. and through, through right. generation after generation. So that was in his DNA code. 
but it was never unlocked until the accident. I, I think it's what I said. I think yeah, I, I think you know if you've ever uh, read about like child geniuses with like instruments. They don't know it. They'll pick it up, but they'll learn it so quickly. They'll start hitting the strings, and it just makes sense to them, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it is. Well, how, how is that different than what I'm saying right now? Like, why can they do that, though? I think that when it comes to certain things like math and music, that you, if you're a genius, you can see it. You can see it and pick up on it and move into it. That's what I think. I but wonder, I don't know. I man. wonder, though, like specific skills like that, though, if you'd like trace back in the origins right. or yeah, genealogy or whatever, if there is like some virtuoso in there. Because, yeah, I, I mean, it, to me, it just seems not very plausible that it would it would be a specific thing like that. Right. It's just weird. That yeah. it would not, without it being in the DNA code from somebody else passed down the generation. I mean, we see small glimpses of this, like with athletes, right? Yeah. I always find it super fascinating when you've got like a family like the Mannings or you have these LeBron James and his son, look at it, the way he's playing. It's just like, yeah. now, of course, he was he grew up around basketball. But this a lot of times these athletes are, and we, we've talked about how you know, the the super professional athlete is like on a whole different. Yeah. It's a yeah. genius. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I could practice basketball every day of my life and work as hard as I possibly can. And, and I'll never reach LeBron James status. It's, right. just, it's just not in my code. Yeah. But then you have a, a, a kid or the kid, like generations of these I, athletes. I that, think it's just, it, it's hard for us to comprehend, but if you've ever, uh, if you ever watched documentaries on like math geniuses, you know, savants when it comes to mathematics, mm -hmm. they just see it. It's they just see it. They don't have to learn it. They don't have to teach them formulas as much as they see it work out. And I think that's kind of what. Well, happens. it is. It's the same thing with athletics. It's the, that's math. Athletics is math. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're com when you're throwing a ball, you shoot a ball. You're, you're and, crossing yeah. it over. It's, it's all well, timing it's and not, yeah, yeah. It's subconscious math. And and I bet you that's how they even see the key. I don't think they see the keys and like math numbers are coming up. No, no, no. Head. I just it's think like, it makes sense. This yes. is how visually they try to explain what's happening. You yeah. know, in all these like TV shows and movies. But yeah, it's it's just like some kind of sense of knowing it already yeah exactly yeah. It, yeah it was so what they they've done studies on it and in that show they said that there's a commonality between these people where it was there's a part of the left side the left side of the brain the left hemisphere of the brain that's damaged mm. in these savants and they think what it does is it because it's damaged it turns off the brain compensates right it's yeah. very plastic so other parts of the brain take over but now that part of the brain which is kind of a governing logical, linear thinking part of the brain turns off, and now the creative part is just <laughs> explodes. Doesn't that also make you think that we limit ourselves so much? Of course. Of course. Right? Like, there's so yeah. many, like, barriers. I mean, even just, even when we're training, well, right? All these governings that are in place well, to keep you from hurting yourself. I think that, I think that the, we're limited for our own safety and survival. And because that was another question they brought up on that is, okay, can we mimic this in the lab? And what's the trade-off? Is there going to be a trade-off? Like, when you know, when you see people who are, okay, I just read an article about Elon Musk. Let's talk about him for a second, right? He's got apparently two other kids from some some executive he worked with. So he's got like nine kids from, I don't know, five different women or whatever. Elon Musk, one of the most brilliant men of, the, of all time, incredible innovator, massively productive, shitty dad. Obviously not a very good dad. <laughs> so I feel like there's a trade-off. You can kill it everywhere. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like there's a trade-off, right? Like you don't, you do really want to I've been be saying that forever. That's yeah. for sure that way. And at, least, and at least in my experience, every time I meet somebody that is just extraordinary at something, you know, they always, they're out of whack in so many yeah. other aspects of their life. It just takes that. I feel like you, it, it, in order to be, so great that you know people talk about you or you're remembered long after you're done you you have had to become so hyper focused on this one you're skill imbalanced. Yeah. you're imbalanced and those other other things fall and that doesn't mean you can't also be a pretty good dad and then be brilliant it's just that most people tend to suck at a lot of the other things because they're so good at that yeah one. well i'm always impressed like if you go back in history and you think about like the craziest minds of all time like leonardo da vinci because so incredibly artistic everything everything like yeah. he innovated he, he invented things like just his newton. knowledge was newton beyond newton was like else. that too yeah newton was like that too he was just all over he was smart with everything that he did you only Philosophy, get like art. a few of those like every century or really so, weird right? and then they were talking about infants brains this is where it was really crazy so obviously an infant's brain is much smaller than an adult's brain so it's it's real small in comparison it has twice as many neurons and neural, neural connections as an adult. So they were saying that the infant brain, if you look hmm. at it like hardware, is the most intelligent brain that exists. Because it's all it's, working. It's so malleable. Simultaneously. Super malleable. Yeah. And so they were it's talking about- It's prime to learn. 
Yes, and they were talking about language. This is where it was getting really trippy. So obviously, if you teach a kid mm. four different languages, they'll learn all four with no accent, and they'll learn it beautifully, the pronunciations. Are, once you reach a certain age, you can learn other languages, but then everybody could tell that's not your native language. You obviously have an accent because that brain loses right, the you've ability. You've built patterns that have uh, yeah, been established. Yeah, so they were saying that, that and I, I, hope, I think I got the numbers right, but if you look at all the major world languages, there's about 3,500 distinct mouth noises and sounds with all these languages combined. The average person only uses something like 47. So if you speak English or you only speak Spanish, or only, you're only using about 47 sounds, but there's 3,500 that are out there. Infants, they, and I don't know how the hell they tested this, but infants can differentiate between every single sound, different wow. sound, whereas yeah. adults can't, which is why we end up with accents and we mess up and we can't learn yeah. language. Oh, so it's so wild to me, you're talking about that, is like how naive we can be as parents sometimes to not think that that infant is yes. not picking up on so much shit going on. Oh yeah, and all the your, body language and everything else. Everything, is going on with everything. It. Yep. You're, you're 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 all about your energy levels, the the words you're speaking, the the TV that's being played inside there, the conversations that are happening oh. in front of him. Like, Dude, so yeah. so my my wife is is she she really is gifted when it comes to babies and children. She really is. And one thing that she did that was so brilliant, it was, and this was obviously she didn't invent this. Other parents have done this, but she was really adamant about this. Is she taught Aurelia sign language? When he was really young, and it's because uh, babies they can't they don't have the motor mechanics yet to pronounce words and stuff, but they can use hand signals to communicate. Yeah. Because of that, Aurelius has been able to communicate with us way before he could say words, and I think it's really made a difference with his ability to understand and communicate. So at a real young age, before he could even say words, we could talk to him and understand. He could communicate with us, and I think it's because we we, you know, we took advantage of that part that that crucial time right well something that we made a mistake on talking about that uh was actually feeding max for so long mm. so part of why they oh. don't have the motor skills so part of what will what will speed up and accelerate a kid learning how to speak is actually them their ability to feed themselves yes so allowing them early on to feed themselves and i learned that literally last year mm. so i had no idea yeah and so part of max's speech delay is, is the motor skills and part of that has been but because of us, because we fed him for so long. Also Katrina chewing would, on food, like biting meat off the bones, yeah. sucking on things. And he didn't do none of that. Like yeah. he didn't do like she was so worried about him choking and stuff like that that she cut his food for mm -hmm. so long. We spoon and fork fed him, like not to, to not that long ago. Or and here he is almost three, where mm -hmm. a lot of time and you know, granted, I, you know, I, I let her decide if she wanted to do that or not do that because I said, listen, if you start that now, he was going to be 18 years old and you're cutting a steak and shit. I'm going to remind you that that was something you did. It reminds me of that picture with Sal and Doug. Where oh, yeah, yeah. Cutting Sal's steak <laughs> yeah, for him. Yeah. I still got that somewhere. I got that picture somewhere. Thanks, Doug, I love that. I love when you cut my meat for Dude. No, but it, it really it delays their speech. Yeah. So if you do, if, and it's important that they, and I, so I know that that attributed to his delayed speech is because he had the cognitive ability to put everything understood he's a smart kid but he's still learning that because he just now really started feeding him so wild right mm -hmm. yeah i know a lot of stuff we used to think like my i got I, I still i get in debates with my older family members because we like to keep our son barefoot mm -hmm. like no put stiff shoes on him he'll walk better like no yeah, yeah. he needs to develop his foot muscles and stuff i'm not gonna put these yeah. hard ass sold freaking shoes on that you made me wear that's why i got messed up ass feet now oh yeah an adult. It's, it's totally different speaking of uh shows that are awesome out and they're out right now like i didn't even realize westworld was out so like the next season just came out they Is dropped this, what, like four two episodes three? uh four yeah four yeah so the last one was a little iffy but like so i was like I mean, I wanted to give it a chance. I loved the first two seasons. And um, so they, they're coming in. I'm like, how many other angles can you go with like AI and like integrating that with actual humans and like <clears throat> how they're going to blend all this stuff? And like, what's what's the new thing that's going to be kind of uh, uh, the threat or like what, that's going to create this kind of suspense? And so I thought it was pretty interesting the, the angle they're going with so what far. It? What is it? And so it's like, it, it, it's more like, so you know how we've seen in the news how they're kind of engineering these like nano uh, insects and, and, you know, and they're kind of going into like these little micro robots and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So you kind of see elements of that with, um, with flies and then also how they're they're basically using them as like kind of like parasitic flies that are now um, uh, basically – uh, uh, making these 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 humans that are left crazy and murderous, and so they're, you know, they're sort of like 
programming them uh, to, to do their bidding. So th this is the, the AI uh, robots that are walking around amongst the, the humans are like now Dude. sort of controlling them through that. We mean. would I'm so like, get our what? asses kicked by AI. Yeah. Just <laughs> it's creepy, kicked, dude. It's like, I was like, oh, because I was already uh, between like, all these like drones and things that they've been shrinking down so much. Like it's very plausible that, uh, you know, like little micro robots are going to be a threat. Well, speaking of AI stuff, you know, I read this article that I thought was really interesting. Like, you know, there's this, we've been talking about the uh, autonomous car being like one of the biggest races amongst all these big companies. Yeah. And um, what people, what this article was making the case for was that, um, what is going to disrupt the space even more that's happening right now and will happen faster is Apple CarPlay. Hmm. Why? Okay, first of all, it's in like 90-something percent of all cars now. Yeah, I know what it is. But And what is rolling out by the third, third or fourth quarter of this year is the ability for you to be driving and pay for gas by a push of a button on your Apple CarPlay and then pull up and just fill your gas up. Oh, oh so wow. So you're Apple Pay and all that with it. Yeah. So Apple is already so doing- So it's going to communicate Bluetooth or whatever. whatever every, yeah. And just think wow. of all- Now think of all the huh. capabilities shopping wise and things like that. And then also, again, tracking- where your habits and behaviors and what you buy on what day, like a coupon all, pops up yeah, for a place you know, drive through <laughs> windows. Like you're kind of like just going by stores and it's like, then you just, just push right. Just, it starts to get your wheels yeah. spinning on all the pot. And that's what they're saying is like, huh. that is so innovative and that is going to disrupt like the space sooner and more than even like what, the autonomous what, cars are dude, going Apple's to. Apple's really good at innovating. Yeah. When are they going to come out with like a way for me to message cars driving next to me on the freeway? I want to be able to do It'll that. be Apple CarPlay that good. will do I that. I want to be able to like pull up next to it. Like I see a car like that. Well, that's <laughs> just hit him a message. We're gonna, that's going to yeah, be a, pull no, over. a new yeah. problem that they're going to try yeah. to would you? Yeah. Would guaranteed. you like to receive a message from the blue Would you pull up <laughs> the stats so I'm, I'm yeah. accurate with that, Doug? What is the percentage of cars that have the new cars that have Apple CarPlay in it? I believe it, I read ninety something percent of all cars have Apple CarPlay. Well, I mean, yeah. your your whatever the you know on your dashboard uh, that you know controls your radio and everything, like it's all going to be like Apple and stuff. The car manufacturers, they're whatever they think use. About, sucks think about compared. what a brilliant move by Apple again, right here to just like they did with podcasting to provide it for free to control the waves, right? They create the platform. They they I bet you. Okay, what was popular before Apple CarPlay and cars? Sirius and, yeah. and XM, yep. and they probably were contract deals out, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, we'll put it in there, and then we get a percentage of yep. this, and so it was like a money deal. Where I bet Apple said, here's some killer technology. Most people have iPhones. We're going to give it to. Yeah. All these cars. I bet you they don't even charge for that. I bet you that there's no, I bet there's no, but now Apple has control of 90% of cars yeah, and what it communicates to all their devices. Yes. It's all in house. Yeah. They don't outsource any of it. Like talk about a backdoor way of getting in, getting in there and now having all this control. What is it, Doug? 98%. 98% of all wow. new vehicles have Apple car. What's all those 2%? The hell's wrong with those? People? I don't know. <laughs> it's like that one dentist. I mean, I imagine they're just four not out of five there yet. dentists. This asshole is like fucking this, tooth, this toothpaste. What a jerk! Yeah, fascinating though, right? That's yeah, interesting. I know. I think that's really. I think it's really interesting, and it's going to be. And then we're going to see the first example of that role. Now, I think it'll take some time before, like every, because the gas stations have to be yeah. aligned, and they'll have to have the technology to be able to receive on the other side. But it's just the beginning of that. And imagine what you're going to be able to do on there. How can Speaking of gas be. stations, you know what I learned the other day? Hmm. So um, our current president put out probably one of the dumbest tweets of all time. Not that uh, presidents ever put out good tweets. We know it happened with the last one. But this, oh, this, guy, this guy puts out about gas prices and says, uh, and, you know, you greedy gas stations, don't raise your price. Or not completely, like, ignoring the rules of economics and not knowing anything. And I did not know this. Do you know gas stations often don't make any money off very, their gas? Very little. Very Some little. of them will actually it's try like to pennies. lose money. It's, that's why it's so. That's why it's so. Why everyone <clears throat> makes like the same price. It's so competitive. Yeah. And that's why it's always within pennies yes. of a difference. And, and where they make so, the where margins. they make their money is the concessions. Yes. Just like the movies. Like they, you show up and you buy the Pepsi, you buy the snacks. That's wow. where they make their money. The gas is like you need gas. Right. Some gas. It's station. their guaranteed traffic. Yes. And, and that's why they stay so competitive because if you're up five more cents, mm -hmm. someone goes right up to the. Yes. The, yeah. And and I so I didn't know that some gas stations will even lose money on gas yes. on purpose. So. To, so they could sell. All their so I mean, I think Costco is an example of that. Yeah. Right. Like Costco gas, everybody knows it's cheap. But then hopefully, I think what Costco's strategy is: oh, you already got to go to Costco anyways, yeah. Yeah. so you get your gas, and then we're going to get you in 
inside the store going in there. So and you're shopping. either a convenience store, or you're like a mechanic, uh, sure. adjacent to that too, right? Sure, or both, right? Or both, like you yeah. see a lot of like the chevrons and stuff do that, right? So yeah. speaking of flies, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> mechanical. They heard flies. me talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> the government sent a fly here to get uh, those, those bastards. I out. had I had another I had a really another uh, interesting story that and I, I should have tied it in with your um, you guys talking about savants, right? Because of the Picasso story. That had to do with Robin Williams. So, do you remember when Robin Williams did uh, Aladdin when he did the genie? Oh, the thing? genie, yeah. yeah so, he, dude, he was way better than Will Smith. Come on. Oh, I mean, he was he was incredible. Oh, yeah. he I mean that. that so, that Aladdin, check that out, Doug. Look up Aladdin's out. like what record? It broke all kinds of records. The 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 sales of that, which is what what brings me to this point. Do you know, do you know about the story on like what he got paid for that and how that all no. worked out? Mm -mm. So he made like a sweetheart deal with Disney to do uh, to do the genie. And his thought was just like, it had something to do with his kids and like, you know, it's oh, fun. yeah, it's He's fun. And, them, yeah. and so he did like, a, and, they, and they they only wanted to pay him like $75,000 or something like that. And back, he was already pretty famous back then. So his going rate would be a lot higher. So he made a deal of doing it for 70000 Well, then the, sh the thing goes fucking gangbusters. It was a billion dollars. Oh, yeah. Yes. It made, back then. Okay, a so, billion back then? Oh, my God. Yeah. So, Worldwide, a billion. Wow. Yeah. So it broke all kinds of crazy, crazy much. records back then. And he got paid seventy five grand. So he, that's crazy. Him and his agent tried to sue Disney, and Disney was like, "Yo, <laughs> it's the agreement we had." Yeah, it was the agreement, so like that. So there was all the, and they made a big stink and went back and forth. But then what Disney did was sent him a, a million dollar Picasso painting. And I don't know what that Picasso painting is worth right now, but I thought that was a really interesting story that I never they, knew about. What did they get it? It was, like, it was like in their vault or whatever. Well, I guess we'll give them the Picasso that nobody yeah, knows Disney's about. Disney's collecting uh, art too, huh? Uh, you know, or maybe they just bought it, right? Like exactly. Maybe that was like, like a, yeah. and maybe what it was was like, okay, he's worth some, and maybe they were willing. And I don't know what that, if it was a million dollars then it's, or if it's a million dollars now. Like, I don't know that if it was, maybe they bought it back. How then, do you sue a company after you already signed a contract and agree? That's, that's so yes. weird. I yeah. feel like the biggest idiot. You know what I mean? Well, we made a deal. Like my shame fault. on you. Yeah, it's like you you agreed to this, and that's where it's at. Like there was a, there was can't a, refute it. I yeah. remember reading about it. Might have been Google. Might have been Facebook. I mean, you got come on these. Oh, the the logo guy. Or, yeah, yeah, a guy the went one up that painted the. Yeah, they outside. wanted a, a graffiti yeah. artist to write their logo somewhere, and they offered him ten grand or shares in the company, which were worth nothing at the time. Yeah, he was smart enough to take the shares. To take the shares. Yeah. Ended up you know being a multi multi millionaire. As a result of it, which is very smart, an artist not take it, turning down ten grand cash, yeah. like who would who would do that, right? Right, right. So, I mean, it's tough because I I think what probably ended up happening too, and I'm sure, uh, you know, this stuff, these guys, all these artists and all these actors and athletes, they have massive egos, mm -hmm. and then I'm sure it comes out, and what I I don't remember like vividly like what it was, but I'm pretty sure that he got a lot of credit for the how great Aladdin was, yeah, mm -hmm. like it like that sh he made. That, oh yeah, dude. like the, it was the, all about him as a genie was the was comedy Crushed was it. epic. Yeah. What everybody was talking yeah. about afterwards. So you know, imagine you're one of the lower, probably lowest paid people on the on yeah, the but deal. You signed the deal, bro. No, I know, I get it. I mean, I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah. I was wrong. It was the wrong one. That was for the new movie. It actually did better than the original. Oh yeah, it went over a billion dollars. Oh, in 1992, wow. when the original came out, it grossed 504 million dollars, which is well, like adjusted which for, basically adjusted, adjusted for inflation. For inflation, is inflation that's like 25 trillion dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 did you find the Picasso yeah, the painting that they gave him or whatever? Oh, I did not. It would be interesting now. to see uh, what it was worth then <laughs> and what it's worth now. I had this meme. There was this meme I shared a long time ago where it said, um, uh, they call 50, in Zimbabwe, they call 50 cent 50 trillion because, you know, Zimbabwe had Stupid. terrible inflation oh, man. back then. I'm like, oh, man, are we going to be like that soon? <laughs> That's so that dumb. I know. Yeah, hey, speaking of movies, guess, change their guess what I'm watching tonight? What are you watching? Thor. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Thor. Yeah. Who are you watching it with? My kids, my oh, okay. kids and the wife. Yeah, yeah the uh, older Natalie one. Portman's obviously. back in this one. Huh? I, you know, I dude, I used to have a huge crush on her. You oh, know, yeah. she's, she's super she's smart cute. in real life. She's hi highly intelligent in real life. Well, she went to what was it, Yale or Harvard, right? Something like something that. Like that. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, like she's super, super smart apparently in real life. But anyway, um, I'm excited to watch it. Looks good. What's his name? Who plays Thor? What's his name? Uh, Chris Helmsworth. Yeah. yeah. Did he? Did he, look, he looks like he gained like another 15 pounds of muscle. He looks way bigger than he did yeah. in the previous Thors. 
Yeah. 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 He is. He's, I saw. Uh, why won't he admit it. he's following Maps Anabolic? I'm going to text him. Like, no, what, he, what he's using is he's leveraging it to sell that. That, center, that center app. I know. What's his uh, More Plates, More Dates guy broke it all down when they first were talking about launching it. He was talking about how, you know, he put on a bunch more muscle. And then like he's, he's, just, he's like, he's getting to the point now. He's starting to look like an 80s action hero. Remember in the 80s? In early nineties, finally, dude, action yeah, heroes I, were just jacked. I miss that that whole genre. Does he does he openly talk about his his anabolics at all? Does he openly? No, talk? I doubt it. No, 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 no these actors do, and it's just like it's so obvious. Is it not? Like, I mean, are, are there? There's got to be some that are open about it now, right? Are no, we, we're not. We're still at that place where we still are in denial yeah, of all that's that. That's an interesting thought. I wonder, like, who would they don't even come like to, out and be honest about it. They don't know? even like to admit to plastic surgery. Yeah, they might. True. They also, though, might have it in their contract that they can't. <laughs> that's probably what it is. I'm sure. Mm. I'm sure that the. I'm sure that the the movie place yeah. does not I'm want sure the, the bad producers like here. I got a guy so, for you. Yeah. I'm not going to say who or what, but I know people in the in, in that industry who they service when it comes to hormones, testosterone, anabolics like land, nandrolone, growth hormone. They service studios like oh, we do the all the Marvel. Superheroes, yeah, yeah, mm. or yeah, we do this. We did this franchise. Of yeah, course, they have a way guy. too much. Of course, and they, they have si a guy. what they do is they sign up, Dude, and yeah. they get the trainer, they get the nutritionist, and then they get their hormones. We're not so. talking just a couple million. These are you know multi million like, yeah. investments. Well, I want to make like it you clear. It to be I want to make it clear. I would one hundred percent do that too. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm not making fun of them. I yeah, mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. That's a. That's you're a, supposed to look like a superhero. I mean, it's know, like the, it's like the time. it's like the pro athletes when people freak out when pro athletes do stuff like well, that. Well, pro like, athletes, it's in their contract that they're supposed to not. So that's kind of uh, whatever. I could see the argument. It's not but in their contract. It's not. They're not. The NFL doesn't say no, you're not allowed to take steroids. Well, okay, that's not in their contract. The NFL says you're not supposed to take that's steroids. What I mean. That's what I mean. The, the, M we'll the NBA test for it and make examples yeah, here but, and there. But yeah. all all the long while, knowing damn well they do, and just brushing under the rug. Right. But when it comes to movies and stuff, there's no that says well yeah yeah, yeah which makes it up yeah there is more. no rules for it. is there any even rules for that wow look at this that'd be interesting hey this is what he says right here it was just red meat heavyweights and some protein look how powder small he's yeah. in that left i believe him i believe him no he's way bigger now that's 2010 that's Doug. 2010 but this article is from july 3rd look up a, a recent picture of thor oh, now. no i know he's, yeah. he's much bigger. he's yeah. jacked he's yeah, gonna yeah. turn into the rock soon yeah. yeah, I mean, he looks way... And then, isn't there a movie coming out with The Rock? Adam? Black Adam, I think it's called? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the Thor, though, I I don't know if this is true or not. I thought it was kind of funny, but uh, uh, Taika Wakiki, I think that's the the producer. He's the one that does all the funny shit. Uh, I don't know. That, funny I, I swear to God, it sounds like you made that name up. What's it does. Name? It, but no, he's from, uh, like, New Zealand. Right? Okay. You mean he's the one that puts all the, like, the comic relief and all the... all. He this? writes these movies, like, and he's... He did um he did the other Thor, the uh, Ragnarok. Yeah. yeah. And so... And that was like the best one I thought, uh, but uh, yeah. So he's he's done, and he also did like what we do in the shadows, which is that show I love that's hilarious, and that's coming back. Oh, I like him then. He's he's great. He's yeah. like my one of my favorites. Yeah, the way that they're but, injecting humor in these is excellent. It makes yeah. them so fun to watch. Yeah. So um, yeah, what was I gonna say? Oh, so he he basically like so Natalie Portman's working in this, and um, I saw I read something I don't know if it's true or not but it was kind of funny that like he's also working with Star Wars so he he was on set with the Mandalorian he he directed mm -hmm. one of the the episodes and he's doing his own project now with Disney for Star Wars and so Natalie Portman after was like what are we gonna do after this right and he's like well have you ever thought about doing a Star Wars and like not realizing she was in like all the prequels. <laughs> yeah, like, know, as Queen back Amidala. from the dead. Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but I thought it'd be pretty yeah. funny. Like you just didn't even she, watch those ones. She looks jacked in the new Thor too. Have you seen pictures of her, uh -uh. Doug? Look up Natalie Portman Thor or new Thor, whatever the current one. I don't remember what the yeah, her arms are all toned and no, uh, she looks jacked. Like, well, the she angles, actually looks. Yeah, but they AI watch, that. I mean, not AI, but CGI that. Uh, who knows? She I mean, actually they, they she do, do that. She now. doesn't look sculpted. She looks jacked. Bro. Yeah, she looks really? like she, yeah, dude. Watch, let's see if Doug can pull up a picture. Yeah, but I think most of that is the angles, and, makeup. Because she's just, I mean, she is toned, but I don't. Uh, it's hard for me to believe. I mean, she's there like, was some. I mean, okay, look at her arms. They did make her like, look at her delts, bro. Bit. She looks like she gained like fifteen yeah, pounds of lean posture, body mass. Though. Yeah, yeah, like it's not. Look at the one down there. Like her arm isn't that big. Yeah, but it's all one, angles. Yeah, I guess you're right. And yeah. they throw some angles. Yeah, well, she's and you, muscular. And you know before She's they muscular, do, you know but, they're but get, out. Compared you know to how get, she looked before, though. Well, you know they get pumps before they do the shoot, too. 
Uh, I don't think so. Oh, one hundred percent. Bro, you know how long go take... for hours. Yeah, hours. You need to keep a pump for freaking hours. Whoa, 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 whoa! Look at that. <laughs> what are you talking whoa, about? Whoa, 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 whoa! Do you knuckleheads really think a, a shoot goes for four hours straight without fifteen? Uh, I minute know, breaks? but they just take after take. Yeah, take they're gonna get a pump and you don't think there is a, a set of bands and dumbbells sitting right over there to go? Oh, grab maybe a... there is, but for five hours you're dead, bro. You're gonna well, lose man, your No, you're not. It's like trigger sessions, bro. They're not doing a fucking workout routine. They're doing a pump. Anyway, no way. Give her credit where credit's due. She's Listen, pretty. Listen, dude, yeah. you guys are. Tr- dude, look at her. Yeah. All right. You know what? We're gonna do this. Yeah. No. I'm not He's saying she doesn't look good. I'm, anybody, just saying, I'm. I'm just making Justin's point that I think angles, picture, makeup, and a pump makes a big difference, dude. It's just we've already learned this in the bodybuilding world. You don't think they apply that to billion dollar movies? I don't think. Come on. I don't think they're getting pumps throughout the season. Yes, they so, are. No, oh, no, please no. Google this. I'm sure they get her pumps. Arms have okay. Size. What's that yeah, supposed sure. to Google? Do they get pumps in movies? Yeah. I might get the wrong movie. You know. Yeah. Uh, they have, they have yeah, pump if you guys do not think that, especially a superhero type of movie, I'm no. not saying that's done in every movie, but a movie where they, they make characters I'll bet lunch. into Bro, superheroes. Let's, let's oil them up and let's, yes. and let's bet that. lunch yeah. on this. Adam, if you're wrong, you're buying lunch for And everybody. by the way, Justin, yeah. you use the word toned. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, tone doesn't exist. Tone, tone, like that's how people <laughs> understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we need, a, we need, yeah. we need a whammy whenever that happens. Remember that show? Remember that I can't show? believe how that muscular. Are no, bro, these are all day. They're shooting. They're not getting pumps all day long throughout. That's not even on the Wait radar. Wait a second, you are a guy who 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 tells people to do trigger sessions all day long for five ten minute. Th- look, these are three a day. Okay, spread out by hours. If I'm doing a five hour shoot, well, not every scene is not every yeah. scene is going to be showing uh, her like this. I'm sure they're not have you ever been bro, in a movie? action I they're have. flexing the shit out of their <laughs> muscles I, me. look have you ever been in a movie what about you <laughs> all right i know what i'm talking I mean, about not yet. Dude, i've been okay. in two movies dude not we're yet. come on let's go google magic you can't google this and figure this out for us or what <laughs> I'll, okay, fucking lunch I'll, is on the line here let's all righty, go all righty <laughs> let's go guy hey, and i ain't eating no like, five guys either i bet, yeah, I want I bet, a good I bet kyle's already figured it out over there right there what do you think kyle they're they're getting pumped, dude. You guys are for sure wrong on no, this. No, I I think the list of priorities. They're not gonna have them get a pump for five hours. I, they barely get fed. We just gotta talk to one of their trainers, dude. That's I guarantee their trainers on set, and he's like getting them the the pump or like hand them bands, like he said. Listen, or, they know. Okay, when they're shooting, they the the dude, direct pump, the, the director it. knows. Hey, this is gonna be a close up angle. Exactly on you sitting. I want you postured like this. We're gonna get. Dude, if Bro, you they do got not- makeup people in there to, to stop what production immediately if like one little hair That's is in their face. Not the same thing as maintaining a pump for five Why hours of be? shooting. Yes, it is. No for, for not, dude. You well, like, like he said, it's the close, it's the angled look, shots. If you that have matter, a pump for where, where it makes than, you look like superhero. Listen, listen, if you have a pump for longer than four hours, you're supposed to contact. Listen, the when I get that's, what I, that's all <laughs> I know. When, we, when you go to a show, okay, when you go to a bodybuilding show, I am there all day for twelve hours, bro, and I am I do at least thirty trigger sessions that day. Okay, so it's I'm not gonna, unreal, and I've even and I've got, yeah, but you're not quick, acting, and I have quick sugars that I'm I slam, and then I get a pump. Yeah, but that's one show. You're doing, you're doing this tricks. for months. Okay, bro. okay, okay. Let's let's put an end to this. At least for Gerard Butler, he did get a pump before action scene. Of, of course, course. Did, they all do. And also, they have green I, screen. In, in, in any movie where you have a superhero type of character, where people are going to be in ooh and awe of their bodies, you would be <laughs> stupid to not get. Did a you pump. see the behind the scenes of uh, what, what was the one he was in with that? The three hundred. Three hundred. Yeah. 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 Yeah, most of those guys just barely were. They like, spray painted abs. their abs. Yeah, yeah they spray painted And then they like yes. totally superimposed. Yes, it. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. By yes. the way, I'm just gonna say Not this. Not getting right. a pump. Come I'm just, on. Gonna, I'm just gonna say this right now. Uh, it's really dumb to be a soldier fighting war with no armor, so you can show your abs. Yeah, like, it really, really is. Yeah. That doesn't sound ineffective. Too smart. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow, look at his abs. Boop. Arrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> yeah. It's like that meme, dude. Like, like Romans. I'm ready for war, and they put their skirt on. Yeah. yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a show, or I don't know. If it's a show, but I think it's uh I want to say it's on YouTube that there's a guy that breaks down uh military scenes or fight scenes and uh, talks about how real or how fake they are. They tear them apart, dude. I love it. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Because yeah. you watch a movie and you're like, wow, is this what they he's like, no, that's not how they fought. Yeah. It doesn't look like that at all. Did you guys know the whole like pushing with the shields thing? Mm-hmm. Hollywood made that up because there's no evidence that they actually did that with really? the shield. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, like to march him back. I thought that one back? actually made sense. I, it kind it does, but he's like, "There's no." They're like one tight unit, and they're they're all sort of walling yeah. off, yeah. so nobody. Yeah, can the penetrate. whole driving them back part. Yeah. he said he did. There's no. There was no evidence that they actually. 
huh. did anything like what this. about when they the make like the uh, the dome where they like protect themselves from i know them. they do the phalanx am i saying it right where they lock up oh, and then yeah. but uh, like as a, as a way to maintain the line because yeah, that made sense too the arrows shooting arrows and yeah. they just like have some guys covering yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It, no. it was logical, at least. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are getting pumped, though, on the They're show. Definitely, that's, yeah, that's settled. That's settled. Yeah. Lunch is on Gerard you. No, I, I, hey, he I said if you're wrong, you buy lunch. I don't say anything about me. That's <laughs> <laughs> said how the bet works. You stole me a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you lunch when you give me my car. <laughs> that's fair. That you buy. That's you still fair. buy me. You still going to give that Mary Kay car, that's, like yeah, the little yeah, pink yeah, one. What, did you guys know that, do you guys know the origins of bio warfare? Biological warfare, the origins of it. Yeah, like the, like the historically, the first times that we actually used germ and bio warfare against each other. Uh, well, I know, like, wasn't mustard gas for some? We had chemical warfare. No, right? that's chemical. Yeah. I'm talking about bio. They yeah, would launch, bio. they would launch uh, people who died from the plague. Oh yeah, uh, over the walls that's into other armies and shit. Dude, they would literally put Brutal. them in catapults and launch a bunch <laughs> of freaking dead plague victims at no you. No way. Yeah. To, to, to cause Spread everybody out. to get sick, dude. Yeah. Oh, wow. How Weird. messed up is that? How, by the way, how dude. terrifying. You yeah, think body so flying in the air? Bro, you look up in the sky and there's like like four yeah. like dead like- It lands on yeah, you and they got like uh, boils all oh. over their faces though. Oh. <laughs> it's like, <"Ugh." laughs> Oh my God, that ruined my lunch. Terrible. All right. This is a phenomenal offer for one of our partners. Literally, you can get yourself free access to masszymes. Okay. So you get yourself a free bottle of masszymes. What's masszymes? Digestive enzymes designed for performance-minded individuals. So if you eat a high-protein diet, whole food diet, you're either on a bulk or on a cut, you want to maximize your nutrient delivery, help with digestion, reduce bloating, um, help with constipation. Digestive enzymes can help, and masszymes is designed specifically for fitness-minded people like you. And you literally can get a free bottle right now. And then after that, it's up to you if you want to get more or not. You don't sign up for some subscription service. You just get a free bottle. They'll also give you some free eBooks with this offer right now. So it's a massive offer, um, and they don't do this all the time. So if you want the free bottle of masszymes, try it out. See if it helps your digestion. Um, see if it impacts your fitness and your health. Go to masszymes.com. That's M A S S. Z-Y-M-E-S dot com forward slash mind pump free to get yourself a free bottle right now while supplies last. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from J Dunn Self Fitness. What order should your programs be done in? Okay, so this question gets asked a lot. And when I went mm. to the Qua meme or whatever on the Instagram page to find questions, there were like 10 people that ask a question like this, like what is the ideal order of MAPS programs if I were to follow MAPS for a year or two years? And I like this question because it's all planned out. Yeah, You can do a lot. Now, people will tell you in 30 days you can make these amazing transformations. Realistically, it, it's going to be a year or two to really make those dramatic uh, changes that also stick around, right? So it, I like the fact that people are talking about a year or two to plan it out to have that kind of sustainable type approach. But let's let's, I guess, break them down. Yeah. Um, I, we've talked about this before, but the first nine months is essentially why we have we, the first workout bundle we put together was the RGB bundle specifically for this. And what it is, is RGB stands for red, green, black. Those are the colors of maps, anabolic maps, performance and maps, aesthetic. Yeah. The first nine months, that is the That's perfect the trifecta. That is the perfect order to start with. And if you did it and you were consistent, you'd have all your bases covered when it comes to strength training. Yeah. And you technically could repeat that cycle and be good for pretty much ever. Yes. So that, but there are some exceptions to the rule, for example, which is the, the birth of map starter or, or you know, resist and maps yes. resistance. Whereas if, or even maps anywhere, if I have somebody who travels, yeah, so that's where these other, yeah, that's where these other programs start to come into play. Right. So as, as a generic answer, that is the perfect order. Mm -hmm. But if you had something specific where you said like, hey, I travel, you know, at least a week out of every single month or uh, every year we go for something for a month. Uh, what can I do there? Or I have minimal access to the gym. And so, you know, is there something that I can do with little little equipment? So I, I came up with one that's general. Obviously, if we're talking to an individual, it can change. But generally speaking, mm -hmm. if I'm talking to the average person who listens to the show, who I'd say our average listener wants to build muscle, sculpt their body, be lean. They want to look good, right? Obviously, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. Yeah. And then after that, I like MAPS Powerlift. 
And then after that, I like map split. And then after that, I like map strong. So now you're looking at probably a year and a half of planned out workout programming, anabolic performance, aesthetic, power lift, uh, split, which is bodybuilding focused, right? And then strong, which is kind of I'm going to add to to that that run there that I think belong here for everybody. Okay. Oh, I, I think everybody have. should have Maps Prime because yes. and, and Symmetry. Okay. Okay. These are the two. That, those two I was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Those two. <laughs> we took your answers, Justin. Do you have anything no, to add? No, it's fine. I, I'm listening. <laughs> those, that's exactly where I was going. Those yeah. two. Those two, in my opinion, have to be in there. Okay. And for the audience, now where do you like it, Symmetry? Well, first, let's go with with the Maps Prime because, and let's talk about like the yeah. idea behind that and why we created that. So when we start with any client, I don't care how advanced, how how, how for, first, if you're brand new, where you're at in the in your fitness cycle or journey, we would always assess somebody. Mm -hmm. that a good and a good trainer should always do that. If you ever hire a trainer and they get right into working out, that's your first red flag. That's a you. huge red flag. Yeah, assessment is is crucial. No so matter they, how advanced you are, doesn't no matter, matter what, where you're coming from. No matter how advanced you are, because everybody has things that they can be working on or improving as far as their their movement. There's going to be better and worse exercise for everybody based that's on right. your movement pattern. And that's what Maps Prime is. Now Maps Prime is designed to complement all those. So you could it, it it's it works in synergy to any of those programs. It's not like you follow Maps Prime. And then you go. No, to Maps it. Prime. You follow along it with them. It literally is your compass because it's trying to direct you. Like, okay, here's a few things that uh, stand out that you may need some work in that direction. So, th so that way you you will find like symmetry. Okay, maybe that lines up next because I have some issues I need to address. Now, yeah. if that's true, why didn't we write that first? Well, the truth is, we knew it wouldn't sell. Yeah, it's yeah. not. We popular. knew nobody was no, uh, selling an assessment program, even though we knew it was the right order for everybody to at least start there. We knew that it wasn't sexy, and there's no way we could have built a business being truthful off of that. No. So we had we we gave what we thought was like a good starting point for a majority of people, which is the red, green, black, which is the point that you made. But in reality. Everybody should have Prime. Yeah, well, so to make it, to simplify, Maps Prime will help you design your individualized, quote unquote, warm up mm -hmm. for each workout. We call them priming sessions. So what it does is it takes your workout and now it makes it more targeted to your individual body. That's basically it. That's why Prime, you run through the whole through the whole time. Now let's talk about symmetry. Where would you put symmetry in what I said, where you go Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, Maps Aesthetic, and then I said Power Lift, Split, and Strong, where would you put symmetry? Symmetry, in my opinion, actually, one, is perfect to interrupt any of those. I agree. A gap in between. Or if you did the, your, the right order and got prime first and took your assessment and you find out there is a lot of discrepancies from left to right. Start with it. Mm -hmm. Say you do yeah. prime, you fail all the tests, you're really, you're, you, you have a very, uh, like glaring, obvious, like dominant side versus the other side. And you know, or, and, and it's visual even like you see, we just had someone, we answered a question and they're like, Oh, it's, it was very obvious that my right trap was more developed than my left. Or we've had questions where someone's like, Oh, my, my left pec is way more dominant than my right. Like if you have, like a, a glaring obvious imbalances that you could visually see and feel i would start there so if you did prime and you found out oh wow i'm really like super different uh, yeah right i'm left. way yeah. off you know way i'm like i can balance on this side on this side i'm way unstable and like i'm way weak on this side i'm way stronger on this if you see that there's a lot of discrepancy then it's actually a great place to start yeah. before and but i think there's no wrong answer i think yeah. with with symmetry you can throw that after or in between any program. Any of those. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, think about it, right? If you took someone who was consistent, so somebody says, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to follow your programs. Of course, nutrition is going to be good. Uh, workout can only go so far with bad nutrition. So you could have good diet as well. But imagine if someone followed that, that anabolic perform. Well, well, first off, we've seen lots of people who've done the RGB bundle because it's been around. We that's our first bundle. We've had it for a long time. Yeah. And people send us pictures all the time. Incredible results. But imagine if they followed that up with power lift, split, strong and interrupted symmetry wherever they felt like you're talking about a year and a half, two years of workouts and the, the changes somebody would go through and strength and aesthetics would be profound. Oh yeah. Absolutely profound. And you're just constantly staying ahead of any potential plateau and by providing this new stimulus, this new adaptation 
and it just all feeds back into it translates so well to all these other pursuits. So yeah. since we're talking about this, I think it's important to address what I think I see is the biggest mistakes that people make with when purchasing our programs is they they tend to do what most consumers do, which is buy the sexy stuff and they ignore the things that are probably most important. Sure. So if you have most of the programs you just listed, but you don't have performance or you don't have prime, I think that's the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because those two programs are going to address the mobility type of issues that most which people- Which is going to result in a better looking physique too. And I want to say that because I have to sell it because I know you're saying what you're saying, Adam, and it's 100% accurate, but some people are like, I don't care. I just want to look good. You will look better. Yeah if you train your body appropriately. So it's not just about mobility, which you should care about that. It's not just about balance, although you should care about that. But if you have better mobility, better balance, your workouts will make you look better. But you could, you could own six or seven of our programs, but be missing prime and performance, and you are missing two of the most important programs, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For le If you are looking for overall general health, strength, aesthetics, longevity, and you want a complete stack of programs, mm -hmm. you absolutely have to have at least one, if not both of those, in your, in, in your routine. Now, how do you feel about this? Okay. Um, and of course, we're talking general here, but if somebody did the RGB bundle, Okay, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. After that, they can kind of pick whichever program yes. they want based off of what my, they enjoy. So, or, yeah, my or opinion what? there, I know you gave what you like in a row, yeah. but my opinion is after you've done the three in a row, you have such a good foundation. Now go pick what you what what you what is right. desirable. Yeah. Like you you more want aesthetic it. driven programs, yes. you're stacking those. Or you, you want know, more, more stamina performance driven. Yeah, Maps more stamina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, and we have enough programs that we've created and developed uh, for those different types of avatars and people that are concerned with, you know, those different uh, avenues of fitness. So yeah. totally, Great. totally. But I mean, that's, you're talking about, again, the original RGB bundle is nine months. A lot can happen in nine months. And then after that, you're in this great position where you're like, cool, I can have some fun yeah. and pick whichever program I want to follow. Next question is from Dominus Omnibus. Can kettlebells build muscle? Oh, of course. Yeah. Can they? Kettlebells are exceptional muscle building. Uh, Arguably tools. the original way to build muscle. Well, it's the dumbbell before the dumbbell was uh, yeah. invented. I mean, literally the name dumbbell yeah, came amazing. from a kettlebell, which which they got from a bell where they took the middle out so it didn't ring. They called it a dumbbell. Now, later on, somebody took the name and trademarked it and made a dumbbell dumbbell. So they had to go and call it a kettlebell. But that's what dumbbells look like. In fact, you can see it in old cartoons. When you watch old cartoons with the strong man come out, there's always the barbell with the two big round weights at the end, and then they always have kettlebells. They don't yeah. use dumbbells. But anyway, it's resistance, just like dumbbells, barbells, machines, cables. So yes, you could build tremendous muscle. The value of a kettlebell is the weight placement. Mm -hmm. It's the leverage difference. It's it's you're, you're handling a weight that's different in its leverage and its balance than with a dumbbell or barbell, which means there's some exercises that are going to be better mm -hmm. with a dumbbell, I'll, with a barbell, with a kettlebell, excuse me. And I'll make you this argument. I, if you asked me this five years ago or seven years ago, you would have got a different answer. But I'll say this now. A sho a, if you're going to do a single arm shoulder press, kettlebell superior to the dumbbell. Yeah. That's my 100% opinion. because of the way it's loaded yes. and, and what it promotes in terms of the spiraling. Yes. That just naturally, functionally, your, your shoulder and elbow and wrist, they all kind of want to go in that spiral line. Uh, I love it. And, and, and if you noticed in most of the programs, there's like some elements of like a rotational row, a yeah. rotational press. So, they, so like that tool itself, the kettlebell is amazing for adding those little hints of like functional rotational mm -hmm. movement while loading that. So um, I, I can't stress enough like how uh, effective they are in terms of like two uh, different ways to, to load the body that's more center to the body, which brings a lot more uh, it, it's, it lowers the risk factors, I guess. Any yeah. drawbacks that you guys see? Well, some exercises are hard to do with, with kettlebells. Uh, you have to know how to have the kettlebell sit on your arm. There's a skill to it. So like if I'm doing a press, you know, I, when I used to train clients, some people complain about that because they'll get like a bruise on their foot. Yeah. Because there's a way to position it and hold it. So there's technique there. So you have to learn how to use it. Um, the other drawback is when you do certain exercises, the, the handle has to move in your hand to it for the weight to move, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. But if you're not, if you're used to a dumbbell where you keep a super tight grip, it's going to feel kind of weird. For example, a chest fly with kettlebells is amazing, mm -hmm. mainly because when I come up to the top, one of the disadvantages of a dumbbell is there's no resistance here. But with a kettlebell, because it's sitting on the back of my arm, mm -hmm. I actually get a little bit more resistance to the top 
than I would with a dumbbell. But when I lower and raise, I have to allow the handle to turn in my hand. So there's there's a tech there's a learning curve with kettlebells. That's a, so I would my answer yes, would have the been the skill. skill. Part of it, it's yeah. a little yeah. more. It takes a little more skill to use kettlebells, and so because of the learning curve is a little bit longer there. And so for the absolute beginner, um, you know, it's a, it's an area like if I'm training an absolute beginner, I may pick and choose a handful of kettlebell exercises that I'll use to teach them that I know that are What are more, some superior extra like what are some exercises for kettlebell superior? Shoulder press. Single leg toe touch too. I think mm -hmm. a single leg toe touch or single leg deadlift with a kettlebell is amazing. I mean, why? Because it shortens the range of motion up? Uh, it's just easier to manage and hold uh, in, in position. Um, so when I would do it with clients, I would start them with that. We could do dumbbells later on. I mean, I think it's I, I think it's easier. That's why. It, it's, it's it shortens. Let, yeah. it, I mean, it's not really that different as far as uh, how you hold it or the it, Because the weight's out the bottom, there's less of this side to side that I got to be careful for. And you're right. It is easier. Yeah. But but I like it. I like the way it I mean, better. you're talking about beginners, so that may, that's a good point. That's a fair point. Well, yeah. I mean, it's very technical, but a, a clean with the kettlebells yeah. is a lot safer. Like, it lowers the risk quite a bit. But but still, you have to learn how to even uh, create that hip hinging effect to, to be able to perform a swing properly. So. You know, there is a little bit of a barrier there in terms of education with them. Uh, but when we're mm -hmm. talking about like lifts like that, like w in terms of a barbell uh, versus a kettlebell, like a lot of times I prefer kettlebells for that reason. Oh, I definitely it's very do. Centric. I, I feel personally more confident doing that with a kettlebell than I do a barbell. I still don't think I'm proficient enough with a barbell. I haven't done it long to enough. To do a clean is very technical with a barbell. Yes. Very, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or, but I feel confident with a, with a kettlebell. I've learned, I've done it enough oh, to where I feel good with that. When I would train clients and when they were ready to do explosive movements, yeah. I would always start with a kettlebell. Yeah. Always. Because uh, it's just easier to handle and, and versus a barbell. And, and the standard kettlebell swing is a great way to teach it. Totally. To yeah. Teach power and explosiveness in the hips for a, a beginner client. And you can do moves like windmill and bent press and things that are like unconventional, but like address so many things that you're not addressing in your conventional programming, yeah. uh, which is like, kettlebells are great for loading uh, those types of really sort of out uh, unconventional type lifts. Yeah. And uh, here's another exercise. Like if you want to develop um, a grip that is strong, that you can, that is, uh, that communicates well to the rest of the body, and you also want to work on stability, shoulder stability, a bottoms-up kettlebell press yep. is fire. Yeah. It really is holding a kettlebell upside down, Super having to grip the handle really tight, and balance and keep the elbow under the kettlebell so that it doesn't flip right. on either side and press. It exposes, yeah, wrist stability yes elbow, like everything like in oh terms yeah of like lateral stability you got to go slow and light i, I it's also great. think it's a must for a turkish get up i think that uh you yeah. know you could technically do a dumbbell but it sucks there is go, that yeah. when you because one of the the limiting things or one of the challenges with a turkish get up is getting a client to to teach them to bring their arm all the way yeah. up in line with their ear and when you have a dumbbell what they do if you've ever trained a, a, a turkish get up with a client with a dumbbell is they cheat it forward and part of that exercise is teaching them and the weight being behind the mm -hmm. wrist pulls it back for you and it really helps that it promotes that good posture yeah. and that movement yeah so um I, I have a client actually that doesn't like the kettlebell because it, it hurts her wrist and you know it was and so we would do turkish gifts with them i used to and i part of the reason why i don't do that often is i don't like i don't like how it doesn't promote the form that i want her to, to train in yeah but, you know it's interesting about the whole it hurts your forearm thing it's very similar to oh i don't like a barbell on my back because it hurts my back yeah it's it's there's a technique to it. Whether you're skinny or muscular, there is a way to hold a kettlebell so it doesn't hurt your arm. Now, what helps is a good kettlebell company that makes kettlebells that are all regulation size, even though they're lighter or. This heavier. is why yeah. I always thought the on it gorillas so and the Star stupid. Wars were so stupid. You arrest that Remember face when I used to this. talk shit about those oh, dudes? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's I, all novelty, dude. It had no purpose in terms of like adding to the exercise. Bro, I feel like if you're a real kettlebell enthusiast, you had to look at that stuff and just think it's stupid. Oh, bro. It'd be like putting Definitely. a gorilla face on a barbell and me squatting underneath the gorilla face, digging into my neck. No, it's like that plate. Have you seen that plate? It has like a, a guy on it, like this uh, like Olympic lifting kind of guy. And then like, you know, as you slide the plate on, it's like his, his. No, I haven't yeah. seen that. No, I haven't seen oh, that. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll put a picture of it. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I got it. Don't worry. Yeah. It's Thank ridiculous. You. Thank it's a, you, Justin. It's a picture yeah. of Justin. Next question is from R. Julian Talons. 
How would you describe training to technical failure to someone who doesn't push themselves hard enough? Yeah, so there's there's two different ways people will use the failure when they lift. And there's really only one that I recommend. Okay. Now you could do the other one too, but I would save that for very special occasions. You have a spotter. So one of them is failure is your last perfect rep. Okay. So it's the last rep you could do perfectly. And you know, if you do another one, you're going to have to take your hips off the bench or twist your body or use body movement or English mm -hmm. to get the weight to move. So that last perfect rep is it, that's the one that you're, you're done. And the next one would be failure, which means you have to use something else to make the weight move. Then other people use failure as I can't move the weight anymore. Yeah. So it's like, I literally failed. I did squats and then I had to put it on the safeties because I couldn't squat. And anymore. if you, if you're a trainer training client, you have no business even going there. There's no. no reason for you to push a client there. I think that's what, what this question comes up because I think people think they need, you, you can build the most amazing physique and never take your client to a place where they struggle so bad right. they can't get the rep out. You mm -hmm. literally can. And that's what I think about when I see a question like this. It's like, okay, so you have this client who as soon as their their body gets a little wobbly or shaky or you know the, the rep gets challenging, they're like, okay, I'm done, and they want to re-rack. Okay, that ain't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not really tripping on that. If I took them to the point where we're, we're we've loaded the bar enough – to where they their their next rep is going to be shaky and a little wobbly, but maybe they could still squeeze out two or three more. I ain't tripping. Yeah, yeah. I care yeah. more about I, form and technique. Yeah, That's no. I, and if I do recommend failure, it's to people who are advanced, and it's technical failure. And there are some advantages, but you have to program it properly and appropriately. And nobody does this. Every program I've ever seen that uses failure doesn't doesn't program it properly. So there can be some benefits, but what Adam said is 100% true too. You can never go to failure yeah. and get phenomenal results with great programs. I totally agree, you know, in terms of like your average person and training and those are the things. What I'm struggling with right now, which is a totally different situation, is with high school kids that don't push themselves very hard and don't really understand that yeah. concept yet. And so to to engineer that is difficult. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of working my way through this by introducing them to, to lower reps and uh, what that whole psychology involves and like how to uh, increase the difficulty by loading more weight, which sounds like stupid and obvious, um, but they're so used to wanting to do more reps. Yeah. And so in that, in that instance, um, you know, what you said applies in terms of like perfection of form and, um, you know, when you stop getting perfection in terms of reps, like you're stopping. However, with this, it's like, um, it, I mean, that still applies, but it's like being able to understand that your mind creates limitations until you expose yourself. Well, uh, you know, to, to, to more demand. Yeah. Con context matters here. Okay. You're, if you were talking to me, okay. I, when we answer a question like this, I always think general pop right away. Right. Like, yeah, I, I'm with when, you, with when you talk to about a, a high school young athlete who is super resilient and is playing a sport where mental fortitude is extremely important. I'm going to flirt with those boundaries. I am going to push them to Plus, more. they don't know where failure is. You, you ever train a client yeah. or even yourself? Yep. And you be like, you know what? I'm going to go to failure on this set of squats. I haven't done that in a long time. And you're like, oh boy, this last one, I know is going to be my last one. And you do it and you're like, oh, actually I got another one. Oh, I got another one. You're like, wow, failure's well, further than I thought. Okay, so I think that's the case this person is making with a regular client. And I'm okay with that. That's okay still for me with a regular client. But with that, in your case... I'm going to push a little more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A regular client, even if they like, they don't understand that they easily had three more or four more than tank on that squat and they, they wanted to quit right there. I'm not tripping out that much. I can still progressively overload them in different ways. I can, I could trick them by slowing down the tempo yeah. or making them pause at the bottom. How many times like have you guys done that? You're like, you're on rep eight. They got to do 10, but you're yeah. like, Oh, this guy's got like five more reps. Yeah. Like we're going to take 10 seconds on this. That's last right. <laughs> yeah. So there, I mean, there's lots of trainer tricks to progressively overload the body without just always adding more reps yeah or adding more weight that you can do to, to play that mental game. And I'm okay, again, with them being falling short a little bit of pushing themselves to failure. Now, if I'm Justin's shoes, I'm a coach with high school kids who, one, are super resilient already, are, are less likely to hurt themselves as my 65-year-old beginner lady. And I also know that there's tremendous carryover in teaching mental fortitude to the football field. I'm gonna I'm gonna flirt with those boundaries way more, yeah. and I'm more know likely to push of. that client. Totally. Yep. Next question is from Espinazzi. What are the benefits of strength training on arthritis? Yo, go boy. Yeah, Did lots you, of. Arthritis. It's now considered essential. 
Mm-hmm. So if you have rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis, now, of course, this is the context of proper application of right. strength training. Right dose. It is considered essential. Now, think of it this way. Obviously, arthritis affects the joints. It's an inflammatory, autoimmune, oftentimes, uh, disorder. What supports your joints and has, has your joints move in ways that are optimal, right? Strong, stable muscle. So when you strengthen, and you have to train someone appropriately or train yourself appropriately if this is you, but if you have strong, stable muscles, your joints are now supported better, less damage is going to be caused, and there's an anti-inflammatory effect systemically with muscle anyway. Muscle so protective to the body that just gaining muscle improves things like insulin sensitivity and inflammation anyways. So it's essential. It's not just, hey, does this help me or not? And I know it sounds counter. Like if you have arthritis, the last thing you think you should do is move that joint. But if you train it properly um, and appropriately, um, it's incredible. And I've had so much success with this because at one point, you know, I trained a lot of doctors. And I remember one lady in particular, she's a general surgeon, one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, by the way, wonderful woman. She was a general surgeon and she told me, hey, I have arthritis on my knees, uh, so I can't do any squats. And I said to her, okay, but don't be surprised if we get to the point where you can do squats and feel much better. And I knew better than to counter her directly, so I just kind of said it like that. Yeah. What did we start with? Uh, hip bridges on the floor, right? Very minimal knee flexion and extension. It's all in the mm-hmm. hips. Eventually, we got her to doing walking lunges and squats, and she was blown away. She's like, yeah. I've had imaging. I know I have arthritis. I have an osteopath friend that told me. She goes, I can't believe how much better my knees feel. From, and, then I, they, and then she would just recommend me every patient she I had. I have a very similar story with somebody with arthritis, but this is where I – you know, I, I found the value in, in the sled specifically yeah, too. Yeah, that's because, a great one. Yeah. And so that's, that's where I started. And it, it was amazing how much, um, because of the volume and the consistency of that concentric contraction without the, the more damaging eccentric portion. And, um, you know, she was able to build quite, quite a, a lot of muscle. And then that carried over into then being able to do squats and yeah. being able to do that like uh without as, as much of the pain yeah, that, well, one, of, one of the reasons why we the your so my grandma had rheumatose arthritis right her whole life and one of the things that causes the the, the chronic pain is the lack of blood flow to the joints yeah. yeah so one of the worst things that you can do when you have that chronic pain and it feels like you don't yeah. want to move stay fixed is to take your vicodin pill and just lay around all yeah. day although that temporarily makes you feel like that would make you feel better in fact you getting out and just promoting movement is the best thing you could mm-hmm. possibly do to promote that blood flow. So, but it's hard. I mean, I get it. Like when you, yeah, when you're in pain, it's, yeah, when a you're rough in pain, one the, the Vicodin and laying on the couch seems like that's a way better. It, it, it feels better in the short term. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you, but in reality, the best thing in your story with your client, with the arthritis in her knees is exactly right. It's like, is to get that person at least moving first you know, and uh, and many times when they have a specific joint where they have arthritis, they're going to be fearful of that. Yeah, right? what I would shoulder have, arthritis. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I can't do anything with my shoulders. Okay, let's just get moving right now. I got really good at working with this because these these clients of mine would send me a lot of their patients, and I would say probably seventy percent of them dealt with some form of arthritis. So I had all these clients with arthritis, and my strategy was isometrics. I use lots of isometrics because yeah. it doesn't require movement of the joint, but it does strengthen the muscles around the joint. It does promote Plus love, it alleviates love. pain, which is a pretty cool effect. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Uh, so I would do isometrics. I would do, I would work on the joints surrounding the painful joint. So if your knee really is hurts to the point where we can't do anything that flexes or extended the knee, we'll do some isometrics and then I'm going to work your hips and your ankles. And then that would lead to then eventually me getting to actually train the joint, usually in a shortened range of motion. But then over time, we would increase that range of motion and you would see dramatic results. There was a study I pulled up while we were talking. Uh, it was an eight week study. This is two months. That's nothing. Okay. When I'm talking about clients I've worked with, I'm talking about over a year or two years, right? Where they would get these dramatic results. Eight weeks, in eight weeks, three days a week of basic strength training, the average person with arthritis in this study saw a 23% reduction in pain in eight weeks. Yeah. There isn't a Huge. drug that does that, yeah. there isn't a, a painkiller drug that can do that. And they did that through exercise. Now, here's the beauty of this and why it's so much better than painkillers. You don't develop a tolerance to it. There's no negative side effects. And it only gets better. Yeah, it improves. If if they got a 23% reduction in eight weeks, what do you think they're going to see in the next eight weeks and the next two years and so on? It's going to continue to go down. Maybe at some point they'll hit a ceiling, but it only gets better. 
It doesn't get worse, unlike painkillers and uh, drug medications. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.